Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Life Questions, the program that provides answers to your many questions about life. I'm your host Bill Harris and speaking about life, it can really be complicated in today's world and that's why we need biblical perspectives to help us along the way. Now, we've invited a group of local pastors to come in and give us some answers on some of these many diverse questions that you have been sending us and I'd like you to meet the guests now. First of all, we have Pastor LeBaron Cox of the Christian Cornerstone Ministries here in Lima, followed by Pastor Neil Whitney of the Church at Allentown. Then there's Pastor Dave Burkhart of Westminster United Methodist Church, and rounding off is Pastor Ted Bible of the St. Mark's United Methodist Church. And of course, later on in our program, we'll be giving you information on, on how you can send us your questions to be answered right here on a future program. Welcome to all of you gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to have you with us. Now, this is interesting. We ended our program last week and we're right in the middle of a heated discussion. Very good discussion. Uh, the question, let me read the question that came in to us. Um, this is a lady who's writing saying that my sister, my sister's son, which is her nephew, uh, has a drug problem and I feel like she's enabling him by allowing him to live at home and not expecting him to work. Um, she says that uh, I don't know how to talk to her. I mean, we've got, you know, there, there have been reports about this all across this nation. Mm -hmm. Sons and daughters that are living in their parents' basement and not going out there to face the world for one reason or another. Uh, Pastor Cox, your summation of the argument was basically that he, he's got to get out of that house and go to work because he's not dealing in biblical principles. And uh, let's see, who else had the other side? It was, yeah, that was you. Pastor Bible was saying, well, yeah, but if she lets him go out there, he's going to get involved in drugs and everything, and she's afraid that he'll be pulled down in society. For our audience, the sake of our new audience for this week, could you repeat the arguments that you had last week? Sure. And then we'll take it from there. Sure. Well, I think that reality is that sometimes the best thing you can do for a loved one is not enable them. You know, so we, we love our families. We want to do everything we can for our families. <clears throat> and I understand this, this, this woman's love for her, her son, her child. But the problem is, it's not going to get better if you don't change the situation and deal with the circumstances. So, so uh, you're saying love must be tough at some times? Love's got to be tough especially in hard problems in life. When you're dealing with hard problems in life, then you just, I mean, sometimes I love you is not enough. You've got to insist on uh, life changes. You got to insist on uh, people doing their best. You got to insist on people uh, doing what they should do. Mm -hmm. and, and because there are some people who won't do anything yeah. if you let them get away with it. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Well, well then, then <laughs> uh, Pastor Bible, then, the, you know, he's saying basically mm -hmm. that sometimes life, sometimes love, I should say, sometimes love has to say, I, I love you, but no. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and, I, and I agree with that. Um, but I've talked with people who have been in this situation. And the concern they have is if they kick that person out of the house and say, you know, go and fend for yourself, then where they will end up, a good chance is, is on the street, in a drug house, getting some bad drugs, overdose, die. And that's and where- And that has happened on some it, cases. It, it, does happen. yeah, it does happen. I mean, I've, I've talked to, again, a friend who, as he's looking for his son, pulls up to a drug house and the rescue squad stopping at another drug house oh, wow. under the exact same situation. Yeah. So it's pretty hard for him to say, no, you need to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I think what Pastor Cox and I would both agree is that this individual needs treatment. Sure he does. And in the meantime, Absolutely. do they work? Do they get out of the house? Do they live in a the house? They need treatment. And what's the path to getting them treatment right. to get Absolutely. them fixed? Because yeah. I agree, they shouldn't just live in the house forever. Well, would, <laughs> okay? you, would, you, would you both <laughs> see this, that, that, that depending on the, I don't want to put the character or the personality of that child, in some cases, 
their success in making that child getting out and fending for himself. There's a scripture that comes to mind. Sure. If, if a person will not work, neither should he eat. Right. <laughs> That's a scripture. Absolutely. Right. So is there a case to be made for that? Just well as a case being made for the fact that if you love that child, you, you've got to provide some kind of protection. But well, I don't think that scripture was written with the understanding that somebody has an addiction. Okay. 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 All I mean, right. That, that's where I'm going to go with that. Okay. I, I think it's talking about somebody lazy. Yeah. As opposed to somebody who has a drug addiction okay. issue. And so I think you have to look at those. So in a lazy situation, you'd say get out. love can be tough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Get out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> to put it bluntly. To put it bluntly. Yeah. You got to go. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, you know, but, but I've also heard people argue, well, they haven't hit rock bottom yet. And when they hit rock bottom, then they will seek the help. You know, seek the treatment, go find the job, whatever the case may be. But sometimes that rock bottom can end up in a funeral home. But you know also, you know, so too. That's, that's the scary part about that. It depends on the individual you're dealing with. Because one shoe doesn't fit all. That's true. And... The individual <laughs> that you're dealing with, you will have to deal with them according to their character and their personality. Right. But I, I certainly agree with you. The, the, the hope is to get them help. The hope is to uh, try to fix the problem. And, you know, um, we, we, we want to do all we can for our loved ones. We want to do all we can for our loved ones. But sometimes it takes tough love. Sometimes it takes uh, a helping hand. And uh, when it comes to a drug issue, it is so delicate. It is so delicate. And uh, you have to seek divine intervention as well. I think prayer and asking God for his help are uh, some of the things necessary. <clears throat> as well as uh, getting support from family and friends and professional people right. that can give you advice as to what you might need to do and the way you should go. So well, there is that underlining issue of the fear that people have because, you know, there's, there's drugs being laced with deadly chemicals. Oh, yeah, sure. like opioids. You know, and so yeah. those... It's just not a drug overdose anymore. It's a drug overdose that will lead to immediate death. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've dealt with this quite a little bit. Um, I do a, a Bible study at the Worth Center. Uh, we do that every Thursday on the lady side. Um, and and I, I think if I were to, to be able to talk to this aunt, to be able to uh, give her some advice about how to help her nephew and her sister is to really become educated in what's going on there. Mm -hmm. right. um, there there's a there's a change that goes on in a person's brain when drugs mm -hmm. become involved. Mm -hmm. Yes, it uh, is. And and in yes, fact, any kind of addiction that there is, yeah. and um, I really didn't understand that for a long time until I started dealing with the ladies at the Worst Center, and and the honesty there was just enlightening for me. In that, um, they were able to tell <coughs> me that that when they were when their addiction was in full swing, they didn't care about anything else but yeah. feeding that addiction. Right. Um, they were willing to, to um, take advantage of their parents, their children, mm -hmm. uh, anybody that they needed to Absolutely. in order Absolutely. to keep from getting sick because of the drugs. Mm -hmm. right. And so, so there's definitely a need to educate themselves. I would also tell the sister that if you can share with with um with your sister to just get off his bus because he's going to take you down with him he sure will and and so he sure will Absolutely. so you're going to have to come to the conclusion that that no matter what happens you can't ride his bus um and and the ladies at the worst center would have would agree with me on that mm -hmm. it's really a, a it's been an education as things went on um but you also have to be prayed up and be ready for whatever does happen mm -hmm. uh, right. because that, that could end in death yeah. and, and you have to be ready for that. The mm -hmm. other thing that we need to understand is that, that this mother and this aunt cannot get him out of his addiction. It takes 
specialized care. There you go. Uh, and, and even with specialized care, it's really difficult. The success rate at the Worst Center, a six-month intensive incarceration program, uh, is only about 2%. 2%. Wow. That's two, two, two out of 100 that succeed. Oh, my goodness. And I will say that though, for those who do succeed, uh, we've gone back several times for their alumni days, mm -hmm. and they always talk about the faith aspect and how that mm -hmm. played into it. Really? Divine Absolutely. intervention. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is, divine, divine intervention. intervention. It yeah. certainly is. With Without that faith aspect, <coughs> they can't make it. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, she's definitely enabling, needs to get off his bus, um, and needs to face the fact that, yeah. you know, it could end badly. Pastor Whitney? Ted brought up an interesting point about hitting rock bottom. Yes. We've worked in addiction for two or three decades now, and I found out really quickly that people bounce off the bottom. Oh. Oh. There's, mm -hmm. there's no such thing as a guaranteed rock bottom. Right. It, it doesn't happen. I really believe in the whole aspect is uh, seasons. We have spring, summer, winter, fall. And when we work with people, and as I've worked with myself, trying to get myself over things in my life, you have to understand there's seasons. And patience is a big piece of uh, getting people through their seasons. Mm -hmm. And then along with the seasons, there has to be deadlines. Mm -hmm. And those deadlines have to be met. And that can be done through interventions. It can be done through prayer intervention. Uh, Celebrate Recovery is a great tool to get people to be a part of. That's a Christ-centered program. Alcoholics uh -huh. Anonymous is God-focused. Uh, there's Al-Anon for the people who are oh, connected yeah. to them. Yeah. It, it's a, it takes a network, it, it takes a system <coughs> and a network combined. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank and you very much. it's not simple. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. We're gonna turn our attention to the issue of temptation when we come back, gentlemen. Okay. Temptation, we got a yeah. question that came in about that. Stay with us, we'll be right back with that right after this. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we're back and happy that you've stayed with us. We're going to turn our attention now to the issue of temptation in general. A question that actually came in from one of you viewers. And the question proceeds to ask, uh, I really want to live a Christian life, but it is so hard for me to say no to temptations. Too often I find myself doing the wrong things and I feel so badly afterwards and wanting to know how they can control these desires. Um, Pastor Ted Bible, this is a good question for you. Anyone with the name Bible certainly should be able to <laughs> tackle a question like this. <laughs> okay, well, I'll give it my best try. We all have temptations. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the fact that she is trying to live the Christian life, you know, I, I don't want her to be putting herself down thinking that she's not achieving that. But we all have temptations, and I think we need to identify them and call them out for what they are. Mm -hmm. Your temptation is different than yours and yours mm -hmm. and yours and mine. Mm -hmm. And so for some of us, when we wake up in the morning, we have to realize what is the thing that's going to tempt us today, and how am I going to be prepared to deal with it when it comes up? And so if it's an anger issue and I automatically start swearing at somebody, then I need to know that sometime during this day, especially if I encounter so-and-so, <laughs> they're going to push my button and I'm going to respond. And the old way that I responded was to lash out to them with foul language. How am I going to do that today? Mm -hmm. Think If you have a plan for the day, yeah, then yeah. most likely you won't at least go the same route that you would have before, but you're gonna do it differently. If, if it's drinking, well, I know I'm gonna run into an issue with so-and-so who's gonna invite me in today to have mm -hmm. a beer. How am I gonna tell them no? Mm -hmm. Or I'm not going to go there or you know, run into that person. What is the temptation I'm gonna run into today and how am I going to begin to plan for it? Paul talks about it in Romans chapter seven. 
He was faced with temptations. He knew. He, he, he knew what he shouldn't do, but he went ahead and he did it. Yeah. So, you know, if Paul's away up here and he's doing it, then we, we all face those same <laughs> things, you know, and I think we just need to plan as to how we're going to address it. Yeah. You know, you know I'm, a, I'm a big believer that when we face temptations, those sins that really knock us down, that we should be prepared to run the other way when we come, sure. <laughs> come face to face. But you know, you we, know, we all have weaknesses. Exactly. And my, my weakness is one thing, your weakness is another, and all our weaknesses are different, is different but God knows. Mm -hmm. Right. And we have to rely on him to help us yes. with our weaknesses. And, and so uh, we have a support, a divine support. Mm -hmm. If we'll lean on him, if we'll trust him, he'll help us through. Mm -hmm. our weak times and 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 also if we can find Christian support systems exactly people that we can talk to uh, places we can go and get uh, strengthening and get help and and you know there's so much that uh, is available if we reach out for it but it it's all about not putting yourself in harm's way in the yeah. beginning. Oh, yeah. right. See, if you don't put yourself in the bar, there's less chance of you having to drink. Right. And um, we, we've got to be, use wisdom in the things that we do because God will help us with the things that we're weak with, but he expects us to do our best. As we look at this, you know, I think of uh, when I first became a Christian and how uh, temptation used to just get a hold of me and, and oftentimes give into it. And uh, I found out, and, and I really respect the fact that they really feel bad afterwards. I think mm -hmm. they're on the right track yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Certainly. Is, is to take that time and, and you know, just say that little prayer and, and tell God that, that I'm so sorry that I sinned against mm -hmm. you. and and Ask uh, for forgiveness. please lord help me to keep sure. from doing that mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. uh, sure. i found the more that i did that the more i thought i don't want to disappoint god anymore yeah. <laughs> so so i began yeah. to avoid uh that the temptation's still there uh but i was better able to avoid it with there the power of the holy spirit leading there you me. go Amen. pastor and, Whitney, you want to chime in well for two words for me is uh, accountability partner ah. uh, accountability uh -huh. Uh -huh. partner mm. Everything that anybody's trying to recover from, if they don't have an accountability partner, that's what Dave's referring to there. Sure. Is you're, you're just destined to fail without an accountability partner. Yeah. Has to be someone that you can be honest and open and sure. transparent with. Has to be someone you can be vulnerable with. Mm -hmm. Someone that you can trust. But if you don't have one, you're in trouble right off the bat. Yeah. I do wonder if another part of that uh, a deterrent factor that is needed is to know that we can choose the we can choose the sin, but we can't choose the consequences. There it is. And um, when you think is. about that, because you don't know where those consequences yeah, are going to come right. from, you don't know what shape or form they're going to take. You don't even have a guarantee of how long the consequences will right. last. Amen. Right. Um, you know, there are some consequences that that go on forever. I, I, I think about the old saying that boy meets girl, they fall in love, they fall in bed. Then they go to the altar and they ask the Lord to forgive them for their sins, mm -hmm. but the girl is still pregnant yeah. because the consequences go mm -hmm. on, you see? Mm -hmm. I always like to look at Jesus when I think about temptation because he had the best plan in the world. He just battled it with scripture. Yes. The word. You see that in the wilderness, don't you? Mm -hmm. yes. Everything he came back with was the word. Yes, yeah. it was. And Satan even tried to use the word against him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very, very sharp. I would, I would like to piggyback on what Neil said earlier about uh, getting a, an accountability partner. Uh, make sure that that accountability partner, someone who's strong enough to tell you the truth. Uh, so many times <laughs> we don't want to offend people. And so, yeah. Yeah. so that person has to be strong and, mm -hmm. and really lay it out there for you so that you know you've done wrong. That's an excellent Strong point. Strong and honest. And honest, yeah, that's absolutely. A, that's an excellent point. Okay. Well, all right, fine. Should we move on to the next one? Um, the next question we got here, it concerns itself with child evangelism and uh, beginning all the way from, uh, you know, when they're a toddler 
all the way up to when they grow up and go off to college and the concern there that they they have faith mm -hmm. uh, as a as a as a child and as a young person that they may lose that faith by the time they get to college but it all starts when they're very small doesn't it yeah, yes, how do we deal does. with child evangelism uh, many of churches have uh, child evangelism programs in their uh, in their churches um, What's the value of having that? Well, I think the best child evangelism process is to do what the Bible tells us <clears throat> and to speak about God when we rise in the morning, when we lay our head on the pillow at night, mm -hmm. when we walk by the way. And, you know, we don't just walk by the way anymore, but when we're driving to soccer. Um, mm -hmm. As parents, it's our duty to talk about God. And I'll have to admit, I failed <clears throat> pretty miserably on that because I wasn't a Christian when my kids were little, oh. unfortunately. Oh. Um, but uh, I've done some evangelism with them since and, and with the grandkids as well. And yes. so, so really, that's, that's a big deal. Plus, I believe that, um, that not only does it help the children, but it's also going to strengthen the family. And that's some place where we're severely lacking in our world today. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to have family evangelism, you've got to have family first. Mm -hmm. And so many times... So many times we have ab absent parents uh, that if they're not there, they can't evangelize. That's so true. so That's it, at my church, we're just really all about strengthening families and, and uh, helping people to evangelize their kids, make yeah. disciples. All right. You know, the scripture says train up a child. Absolutely. In the way that they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart. You know, you, you have to put, it, put something in them. And when you put something in them, we can trust God to do the rest. Mm -hmm. if, we'll, if we'll obey the word and, and believe God for his promises, you know, uh, they may stray away. They may stray away. Uh, but I think that what's in them is going to always be there. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just have to believe God for the recovery or uh, uh, the that child uh, or your your child coming to God and and uh, walking in the way that they were taught to walk. There, there seems to be an attitude in the world today, though, that that I'm going to I'm going to kind of take a hands off approach to my child's spirituality and let them choose the way they want to go and mm -hmm. and the unfortunate part about that is if if we don't evangelize our kids if we don't lead them to Jesus Christ mm -hmm. uh, if we don't give them <clears throat> roots in the Christian faith somebody else is going to give them roots Absolutely. in something else that's right that is so and that's, true that's, yeah, that's that the unfortunate so part and of you it. know I don't I I I tend to think that you know in my home when we were going my, when my children were young, you know, we didn't ask them if they wanted to go to church. Mm -mm. We told them they were going to church. You bet. <laughs> and, you know, there's, there's so many different uh, beliefs today that you don't force. Well, you don't force it on your child, but you're training them up. You're teaching them. And when they go to church, they hear the word of God. Believe it or not, when they're sitting there in them pews, they're, they're getting something. Sure. From the service. But to uh, leave it dependent on whether that child wants to be in, uh, involved in church is not their decision. It's the decision of the parent. They don't have the capability to make that decision Absolutely. at that point. Their Absolutely. brain hasn't developed enough mm -hmm. to, Absolutely. to be good at the decision making process. Absolutely. So they or to know parents. what's best for them. That's why God created us to be parents. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. Listen, there's another letter that came in that uh, I wanted to share with you. A born, as a born again Christian who deals with mental health issues mm. and good. has contemplated suicide good in the question. past. Good question. My question is, can a Christian really have these issues? Can a Christian really have My these answer issues? is yes. Yes, absolutely. Because you know what? The church is a hospital <laughs> for broken people. Mm -hmm. And we all got some kind of brokenness. We all have found within <laughs> ourselves that we need God. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. God has, has ordained the church to be a hospital 
for people with issues. And you know what? Sometimes you're going to have issues to the day you die. But listen, God will never forsake you. He's going to be there for us. And you know what? She may have a health issue. She may have a mental issue. But if she has accepted Christ as her Lord and Savior, she is still a child of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Can't no one take that from her. Now, she may not she may not be completely healed as she desires to be, but you know what? God have promised that he is going to do everything that he desires to do in our lives at his time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes deliverance doesn't come until we're called home to, with Christ. Yeah, and I don't think mental, but, mental health issues have the same uh, negative connotation as they used to. Well, the, you're right. It, people yeah. are beginning to understand that it's right. coming out now. You know, some it, people have uh, you know, right. cancer and some people have mental issues. There you go. Um, yeah. People are talking about mental health issues there now more. Yeah. And the, 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 the stigma is falling off. Sure. The, the, and the more we talk about it, the more the stigma goes away. Which is yeah. a blessing because yeah. it yeah. needed yeah. to happen that way. You, you know, know what? I, I saw a documentary years ago and they were talking about people who were mentally ill. And they found out that a lot of these people were mentally ill because they had physical issues mm -hmm. that were causing the problems that they have psychologically. And with the right medications, those people could function just like normal human beings. So many times a person's uh, psycholog psychological issue may be caused by a physical issue mm -hmm. that with the right medications could be treated, but n whatever our issues are, God is our help. Mm -hmm. And faith and trust in him is all we need. Very good. Well, I think, we, I think we'll end it there. And God bless. Uh, we really appreciate all the fine input from all four of you. And uh, you. hopefully we've been able to share some things today that will help a lot of people that are watching out there. And let me just encourage those of you that are watching. Um, if you want to send us your questions, we would be glad to have those questions so that we in turn could uh, have a panel like this one today uh, to sit down and hover over your questions <laughs> and to give you some answers with a biblical perspective. That's what's important, not just answers, but answers that come from a Amen. biblical um, uh, perspective. That's all the time we have for today. We'll be back again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Bye-bye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.